YouTube machine as well. My name is John Polnick. I'm the host of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd ad on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer and sometimes some other auction sites as well. That's right. Uh, that is correct. I'm coming to you from uh, Las Vegas, fabulous Las Vegas, right on the Las Vegas Strip, um, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, coming to you from San Francisco Bay. Good morning, Michael Deeb. How are you? Good morning, JP. What's wow, happening? Wow, look at that. Sounding a little, little good morning Vietnam thing going on there. I uh, slept in my own bed last night, so I'm well rested. Although my yeah. Was shot. You were doing some travel in the last couple of days. You were here, Oof. you were there, you were all over the place. How was the drive back to uh, San Francisco from Las Vegas yesterday? It was good. It was good. Yeah. You know, my sister and I, it, it's funny, you know, we're close. So we talked the entire eight hours. So my voice is oh, shot. Nice. We talked. Eight hours on the way out, eight hours on the way back. She loves her new car. Um, thank you, uh, Sean Williams from uh, Mercedes-Benz of Henderson, uh, my buddy from God and Porsche, hooked her up. So nice. thank you, Sean. Nice. Good stuff. Um yeah, man, I feel like I feel like we're I feel like we're working through the weekend or something like that. I feel like yesterday, <laughs> you know, we did kind of a rushed episode. We tried to get at it early because you were in town, and then we wanted to get off and get back on because I sold my personal Cayenne on uh, on Bring a Trailer yesterday. So we did back to back live shows, and yeah. uh, boy, that beat me up. I don't know. That was stressful. I was just like so wound up and too much coffee. You were something. you were unusually. Uh, you know, you're unusually stressed. I could yeah. sense it. And uh, what's funny is uh, you sold your car well. And I yeah. don't think there was ever, there wasn't ever a doubt. Like, it, look, man, that thing was nice and you made it look pretty and you did well. We did really, really good on that thing. And uh, and uh, the new owner seems pleased. Uh, they're excited. It's an interesting company. We'll, we'll talk. I, I don't, I, I want to mention their name, but it's like Heiko. I, I, I feel like I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but they, they literally have a fleet of vehicles for rent or something in oh, wow. Chicago. So they have like wow. G-Wagons and uh, other off-road vehicles as well as like F Rolls-Royce Phantoms and just a just a crazy collection and it looks like they're they're making them available for events and pictures and photos oh, and, cool. and for driving so events the and livery, stuff like that. The livery will live on then, huh? It would seem, yeah. And they uh, they That's even reached awesome. out and asked if they could continue to use the photos that uh, Lee took and I gave them permission to, sorry, Lee, if that's not okay, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's awesome that those photos, those brilliant <laughs> photos are going to get out there and being used yeah. as marketing material, uh, for their company. So that's going to be cool to see, uh, the Cayenne, uh, the Cayenne live on, um, uh, really yeah. about it. Maybe, maybe That's we'll awesome. have to take a trip out to Chicago for the, w they have that event there. What's it called? The uh, checked it out or something like that. Uh, have you heard of that event? Oh, no, they do I, a really cool been... Porsche event there fairly regularly in Chicago. Oh, so next time, m m maybe we'll have to go check that out and rent the old Cayenne. That would be dope. It's, it would be cool. I have really good friends that live in Chicago. Uh, you know, so it, if I go, I, we would be welcome with open arms. Nice. And the Cayenne is, you know, it's it's almost bulletproof. So, you know, if, as the bullets are flying through Chicago, uh, we should be <laughs> yeah, fine. Right. Oh, man, that's terrible. Uh, all right. Well, there it is. Uh, again, thank you, Heiko, for and all, everyone who bid on the Cayenne yesterday. Uh, that was really exciting. And uh, sorry, I was stressed out. Uh, here it is. We've got a, we've still got two more days left of the week. This is a Thursday edition of Bid Nerds. Your most, uh, no, it's, you're, you're off. it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> See, it feels like, uh, it feels like Friday. It's Wednesday. We still have three more shows. We have this one and two more. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, out. All right. I, you just give J all the, JP, uh, your bids. I'll JP, just blog out it, now. It, JP, if you only have two more shows in you this week, that's okay. I'm proud I don't do have two with, more shows I'll, with in me. I have. I don't even have this show in me right now. I mean, I'll, I'll do Friday show with Patootie and the root, the ratings will go through the roof. Man, awesome. well, we do. I can't. I can't skip out tomorrow. We got Bradley Brownell tomorrow. Um, Thank God. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I was just excited yeah. about uh, Thursday's episode because we got we'll have a third nerd to lean on tomorrow. I could just like be asleep at the wheel, be like that's pushing hilarious. buttons. Um, oh yeah. my God! Awesome. Basically, you guys will be looking at my Facebook screen all episode tomorrow <laughs> because I won't even know what I'm pushing here. Uh, yeah. nope. All right, nobody will, nobody will notice. 
<laughs> well, despite my uh, not being a hundred percent with it yesterday, uh, we you know we do one of the things that we do on the show. If you're new to the show, is we we make predictions about these cars that we talk about and what they will sell for ultimately when they hit the auction block and when the hammer comes down. And sometimes they don't sell, right? Uh, so we right. made some predictions yesterday, and um, I don't know. You did too good. much coffee seemed to work out for me. How, what happened yesterday? What yeah. were the cars we talking yeah, about? Yeah, yesterday? yesterday was good. Well, let, let, first of all, let's start off with your car again. So, you hmm. know, JP, we sold, uh, we, we sold, we looked at uh-huh. your 2008 uh, Cayenne. This is an E1 platform base model with a manual transmission. You slapped uh, what I actually believe, and I'm not just, it's not just because you're my buddy. I actually love this motorsport inspired livery that is very contemporary. Uh, this is what Porsche's racing efforts, factory racing efforts look like uh, in every category they compete under the Porsche banner. Uh, so this livery, uh, Lee's photographs and the great video that you made uh, with Rochelle's help um, just helped uh, bring this car to a national audience, your first car and bring a trailer. Um, I actually thought your car was gonna get a few more bids. I, I was confident when I said 24,000 Hmm. Uh, you bet $19,957, uh, your car closed at $20,000 and sold at that price, which is a fantastic number for a base E1 Cayenne, even, even considering the fact that it has a manual transmission, yeah. that was all the money. Uh, congratulations to, uh, Heiko. Uh, we hope you get rave reviews, renting this car out into the Chicago area. Uh, this is a eye catching automobile and really well sold. Yeah, man, I am definitely going to miss this car. I did drive it yesterday because uh, I needed to go pick up uh, some parts for the slant nose. And I, I and I got to tell you, it's just like rolling through the gears, just driving around the neighborhood going, yeah, man, I, you know, when this when when they send the trailer to pick this up, I'm going to I'm going to have that little tear in my eye because I, I yeah this yeah. one because not only not only is this one what it is and we've talked about it, you know, to yeah. death uh yeah. but it really it, it it's one of the, you know everyone knows me knows i go through cars pretty quick um this car yeah. has kind of been in my life for a while i've had you know a lot of memories in this yeah. I, you know driving my dad around and um you know i mean I, I did some road trips in this thing and it's just an absolutely yeah. terrific terrific truck yeah. uh and yeah, i hope a, it serves the next owner well as well as it did me that, that winds up being a sweet memory when you drive it out to Arizona to go visit your ailing father at the time. That's yeah. that's going to yeah. be near and dear to your heart. Uh, this car could clearly be called Second Chances since you owned it twice. I think yeah. it was really cool. That this car was offered back to you yeah. uh, and you made something you made something of it a second time. So very cool uh, story. Hey, last thing I want to mention, too, and we didn't really I think we did talk about it and I can't remember, but white wheels are OK. If you have a color, yeah. if you want to match your color to to, to your wheels, it, it only works if you have silver, white, or maybe black. Uh, but don't do it with red or yellow. No, so, no, only only the two point seven <laughs> Carrera from the seventies got yeah. away with seventies uh, colored wheels. Um, it's but true. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Okay, we also jumped over to cars and bids to look at an Audi RS four. Uh, this kills me when uh, every single time I tee up an Audi, you heard rich nerds and ass out of your mouth all over the apps that i keep just bringing you these gorgeous cars like this rs4 that we looked at yesterday and then you guess correctly that they're going to fail at the auction so on cars and bids this is a high mile no story car i love them because of the bulgy fenders the normally aspirated v8 and the manual transmission you hate them because they're just maintenance nightmare i said 19 you said 17 this car sold for 17 8 you beat me by 200 bucks and it's just the only thing that makes me angry is when you get right on Italian cars. But anyway, this one, another one you got. Uh, so that's two for you for the day. Well, here, I have, a, I have a pretty specific theory as to why Audis do so poor, especially contemporary Audis. Like if we saw a yeah. Quattro, like an 84 Quattro, of course. Um, you know, yeah. I'm all over that and that, that's going to sell. But something like yeah. this, a, a fairly late model, contemporary Audi, whatever, you know, I bash on the owners of them. They're, you know, the, the lime colored vape people. Uh, typically. Um, but here's the thing. Nobody that wants an Audi can afford to buy one. Uh, and I, and I mean that literally. So they have to go out and they have to, uh, they have to finance it. They have to, they have to go get a loan, uh, and, uh, get, get approved with their loan. Um, 
Michael D. It looks like we lost Michael Deeb there for a Can second. Can you hear me now? Everyone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I, uh, That's I all right. Interruption. I apologize. No worries. So I was just saying that nobody, the, the reason why I think uh, Al, and sorry everybody, I'm going to repeat myself here if you were still listening. The Thanks. reason why Audis don't do well uh, is because nobody that wants one can afford one. Everyone that wants an Audi, a contemporary right. Audi, has to get a loan. And if you have to get a loan, buying a car off an auction site is kind of a, from an individual, is kind of a pain in the rear, right? You got to go through the process and da 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 and then you got to contact the guy. It, it just doesn't work out. These auction sites really work best and only work for people that have the money to buy the car. If there's any other kind of financing stuff in the, in between, uh, it just, it doesn't pencil out. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's inconvenient. So I think the Audis are almost always dead on arrival because they're young people that don't have 10, 15, 20, $30,000 sitting there ready to drop on whatever car they want. That's why the enthusiast cars that are geared towards people in their forties and fifties make all the sense because guys our age have the money um yeah, so you I, know there it is i i i actually believe that's a really good take um and it's true it, it's interesting with a car like this uh you wonder if he wouldn't have done better if he just put it on an auto trader and asked absolutely grand for it. absolutely it's just bananas it's absolutely yeah. bananas but it's uh, a car yeah, that someone wants especially in their area and then the kids can come out uh you know in their skinny pants and they can test drive it and they can do all that stuff and they can take it to their bank or their credit union or whatever uh and they or, can work all that stuff out or their mom or yeah, yeah exactly yeah, co-sign a loan for me mom. yeah yeah, for yeah. Sure. Well, I'm still so anyway, living in your wait, basement. Uh, yeah. that, I'm going to be a YouTube store. <laughs> totally. So there you go, uh, JP. <laughs> another another Audi sob story. Uh, um, the one bright spot of the day was the 1987 Porsche Woo! 911 that was on Bring a Trailer. Um, just a really cool car. I, I, I don't know what it is, JP. I'm telling you, the, I think the $50,000 uh, transaction this car had on Bring a Trailer a couple of years ago might have held it back. Um, maybe not great marketing. Maybe the fact that it didn't have all the right options with the limited slip. I'm not sure, but, uh, I was, I wasn't surprised. I, you know, I was thinking, is this car even going to break 80 yeah. where it should be a 90 or $95,000 car, but I, they're just something off. I don't know. But it, it, I can't explain it. Can't put my finger on it. I said 78. You bet the over it. I went nuts. I was so crazy on your, this car, but I love your, this thing. But your, but your bid's not out of question. If this yeah. car was truly no stories if it maybe had paint meter readings if it was at uh, rm sotheby's this, this mm -hmm. car absolutely bring one hundred twenty thousand dollars. but uh anyway it failed it, just something about reading the room here i said 78 the car sold for seventy two thousand dollars. it was actually below my bid mm -hmm. um anyway so it was my win for the day there you go um we didn't have time for the 2008 mercedes-benz clk black series bummer and then um another one damn it an italian car jp you did this to me again <laughs> i thought we were friends 1991 alfa romeo 164 s uh they made fewer of the s's they had firmer suspension cool body work and a hopped up engine uh so back in 91 the standard 964 made 180 horsepower but like the four cam s made 210 i mean these really were hot rods back in the day this car had like 55,000 miles in the bay area triple black no stories by all accounts original paint which is really rare on these cars most of these did not spend their life in a garage this one clearly did so i said 13,000 and thought that was a crying shame to bid so low you said 11 and the damn thing sold for 10,000 bucks so you got sold. three wins yesterday yeah. And I got one, and uh, you sold your car, which in of itself should be a Yahtzee. Congratulations, JP. Great day. Pretty darn happy. Wish you had won that particular bid. Uh, but uh, I hey. wish I bought the car. Ten grand, yeah. I should have bought the car. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right. Well, here we go, guys. Uh, that was yesterday's cars. Yesterday's news, the recap of the things that we talked about yesterday. Now it's time yeah. for current events, right? Let's get to the cars of the yeah. day. Since this is the your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Biz and Bring a Trailer. What have we to talk about today? I am pretty darn stoked i mean we are we're always really porsche heavy uh yeah. porsche 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 we love porsche just like marsha 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 uh our big star car of the day is what it's that uh not a porsche <laughs> it's a honda let's talk about the honda first that's right yeah so jp here's the thing man uh it, all right jeff harley friend of the bid nerds mm -hmm. uh ferrari salesperson his he has a he has a child and he has a baby and his baby is his 2002 honda s2000 
So uh, I worked with Jeff Hartley. We worked for Audi Volkswagen together for a couple of years, and uh, and he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't shut up about his damn Honda S2000. So in 2006, I broke down and took advantage of their like $300 lease on a brand new S2000 <laughs> and got an AP2 and loved that thing. The whole point of this story is that when my car was due to be turned back into the dealership, which I don't know why I did, I was 8,000 miles under my allocation. Um, wow. I turned the car back into Honda, and what they had on the showroom floors were Honda S2000 CRs, the only limited production special edition that they brought to the United States. And what the CRs did that differed from the regular cars, CR stood for Club Racer, and the whole idea behind this car was to flip up the suspension and lighten the vehicle to make a better track day toy out of the Honda S2000. It's already a great track toy. It's already a great back road car. Um, using the AP2 platform, you have the 2.2 liter motor, which has got pretty good torque. They went to, I believe, the uh, close ratio gearbox from the AP1. You have the 8,000 RPM rev limit. And then they took the convertible tops out of the cars and offered them with a hard top only. So if you parked the hard top in your garage and went out, you were in a roadster. And that saved you about 100 pounds right there. Hmm. Uh, they also offered radio delete and air conditioning delete. Most of the cars, including our car here, have the radio and the AC. But the coup d'etat would be uh, find a like a zero mile, uh, both delete, like both of those things delete. And you'd have the ultimate expression of what the S be in the state according to Honda. So this particular car offered out of, I think it's Huntington Beach. Yeah, Huntington Beach, California has just 985 miles. Uh, it's not the purest of the pure because it does have the AC, it does have the radio, uh, but the tweaking to the suspension, the rear wing, these are all bespoke that uh, sort of cam covered uh, cover over the back. Uh, you can see that JP behind the headrest. The Sportster that, humps. That yeah, the Sportster humps. Those are all unique to this car. They only made them for one year. They only brought them to the United States. They made a little less than 700, and they only came in four colors. So by all accounts, this is probably like one of 200 black cars with less than 1,000 miles. It's an absolute unicorn. And the reason why I picked it over the weekend is because I could tell early on, and I was wondering, is this going to be one of the first publicly transacted S2000s that breaks $100,000. Wow. Believe it or not, JP, this car is sitting at, with three and a half hours to go, this car is sitting at $81,500. Not crazy number of bids, but man, JP, these cars have a cult following. 19 bids. So in 2009, when these cars were on the showroom floor, a lot of these cars sat on, on dealerships lots all the way into 2010 and 2011. They were still selling the last brand new s2000s the moment the last ones were sold s2000 and also similarly acura nsx values skyrocketed and these cars have been very strong in the secondary market so this is one of the rarest ones out there therefore i think this has a chance to get to and possibly break a hundred thousand dollars today on bringing when you say these cars are very strong in the market you're talking about s2000s in general not specifically crs Correct. right crs crs are are even like how do I say more exceptional like they have well they yeah no I get that it, the, yeah. the the, the but, question yeah because it's like how many of these CRs are there I've never I, I can't say I've ever noticed one for sale and you know to be yeah. perfectly honest and and I love S2000s I mean they are one of one of the greatest sports cars of all time I mean you'd have to put it on a top 10 list right um yeah I, I think this thing personally, I think this thing is hideous. If I saw this driving down the road, I would go, Oh my gosh. Um, you know, so again, I'd make the vape joke because the, the front splitter, the stupid wing, uh, the, the yeah. speedster who humps are just awful, but everything else about the car that, you know, all the things that you're talking about, all basically all the oh, RS man. stuff, the light and suspension, yeah. the, the radio yep. delete, all that stuff is exactly what you want. And it's so awesome that Honda did this. I love, love, love the fact that there's no, convertible top i think that's so great that's that it comes amazing. with a removable hard top go out good luck man if it rains on you bring a hat you know that's just i love that um but yeah aesthetically yeah. i think honda what a miss but uh wow a hundred thousand dollar potential car it, this ad Isn't is not a hundred thousand uh, dollar ad though these photos are no. awful no 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 i mean with as special kid, as you this, as this car is it should really have been represented better i mean oof. I, 
by by all accounts, if you believe the story of the seller, he picked this car up and didn't realize what he bought. I really? can't fathom that he bought this car in the last year or two and didn't pay a premium for it. So by all accounts, it seems like he may have stolen this car from somebody else that didn't know what they had. Wow. Because he says he drove it around and everywhere he parked it, people were offering him money for the car. And he realized he wasn't going to be able to go out and drive it. He cleaned it up and he he like got it all buffed out and shiny. And then he's offered it for sale, according to his story, which is really, really weird that this car transacted once where somebody didn't know how special it was and that a premium wasn't paid for the low miles and the limited production number. Um, but these cars are great drivers. Those motors are hand-built by the best Honda engineers. And JP, they, they absolutely rip. I love these cars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I could, see, I could see that story. That story is totally plausible to me because, I mean, think about like... Think about this car when it was sold originally. I mean, it's nobody sitting on wanted a, them. Nobody wanted it. It was on a Honda showroom floor. So who's coming into a showroom looking yeah. at cars? They're like people looking at Odysseys and CRVs and totally. stuff. And there's that sports car over there. And maybe the husband of some, you know, it was like, yeah. or an old guy, you know, like uh, yeah. some retired dude coming in and going, oh yeah, that's a neat looking car. Uh, I want that. And they don't realize that it's, you know, they're like, okay, it's special. And they're probably, attracted to the stupid looking humps in the wing um Seriously? thinking oh yeah this is a great retirement car and i'll get this and i'm gonna buy my uh granddaughter her crv for the for her you know baby that she just had with her baby daddy or something <laughs> whatever i'm just you know going nuts here but i could see this is totally plausible because that guy would buy the car barely drive it stick it in the garage not really know what it is <laughs> right. go to sell it, look up just S2000, what's an S2000 worth yeah. not knowing what the CR thing is and trans, I mean that, that, and that's, that is the story that we all like yeah. wish for if we're looking yeah. for yeah. used cars, like, that's, Oh my God. That's, that's the Honda version of the Porsche barn find. I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You find an RS, uh, an RSA and they just think it's a regular 911 or totally. something like that. Yeah, right. totally. Right. Um, yeah. all right. Well that's, uh, I mean, honestly, I, you know, I learned something on my own show that, uh, I was unaware of how, just how special the CR our version was uh yeah. and uh now that i know geez eighty thousand dollars how many bids was, we got on this thing so far not only like 19 you know these things yeah. jp were like you know the idea is if you got like it's no convertible top no radio and no uh ac it yeah. was like 130 pounds savings most of them only saved like 95 pounds because most people put the ac and the stereo back in the car uh but you know taking 100 130 pounds out of an already you know my S2000 weighed 2,800 pounds. So you're talking about a 2,700 pound car here uh, that handles, like the Honda retuned the suspension. These cars, they grip. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that's, I mean, it's an S2000. You could say all those things about a regular one. So the fact yeah. that Honda made it better is amazing. Were they more or less expensive when they were new than the regular Ooh, one? That's because, a good question. you know, you look at a 964 RSA, those were way less expensive than a regular uh, Carrera 2 or a Carrera 4. The Speedster 964 was less expensive than a regular cab. Um, yeah. So, you know, was this the kind of car where they did the same thing? Was Honda like, oh, we're going to charge less for this kind of hipped up thing? Or, you know, no, 2009 is far enough, you know, from there where, where companies started to figure out, oh, we could charge for more. We could charge more and give people less. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think there was a small premium to get the CR. And it wasn't mm -hmm. like they gouged him. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a GT3. Yeah, it wasn't like eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> to take hundred pounds out of the car. Yeah, uh, but you know, S two thousands were always around forty grand. I imagine these were somewhere between forty two and forty five. You know, on the ground, so yeah. not expensive. All right, where's it going to land? Nineteen bids. So JP, I agree with you. I think this is a terrible ad, mm. and and that's a bummer. There's no paint meter readings, and I if, if you're going to pay six figures. For a Honda that only has a thousand miles, I think you need to have paint meter readings. I think you have to have a better version of the story. I, it, it just, it's not a complete, there's something incomplete about this ad. And similar to that uh, Porsche from yesterday, that 87 uh, G50 Carrera, yeah. uh, I think this, gonna, this car is going to struggle. So uh, I'm going to go, I, I, so I wrote 95,000 and I'm talking myself out of it. I'm going to say mm. 90. 
two thousand. Ninety-two. All go. right, I'll take yeah. your bid. I'll go ninety-five. I'll, I'll I'll live the hype. I mean, I went yeah. ninety-five on a Porsche yesterday. Why not go ninety-five on? Uh, I went ninety-five on a G fifty yesterday. Yeah, I could uh, go ninety-five for an S two thousand today. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. I don't yeah. have an excuse for being on pins and needles or selling a car today. So, but the thing is, the delta between uh, where it's sitting at now and ninety-five is just not that far. Uh, no. Especially if this car is that is a special as everyone says it is. They- they have a cult following, man. I'm telling you. I, I got to think whoever buys this, though, seals it away, and this thing doesn't see that's, asphalt. That's a problem. That's a yeah, I agree. That's, that's so sad. sad. It's yeah. beautiful, but yeah. whatever. All right. All right. Uh, what's the next car? What do we got? Uh, let's jump over to Cars and Bids. Let's uh, okay. travel on down to Florida. We're going to go to Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, Amelia Island for this uh <sighs> Florida. Uh, Jake, we are never going to have a fan base in Florida because every single time we mention Florida, I say Florida. Because uh, what are you doing in Florida, man? I mean, I guess it's open, I so that's pretty cool. I mean, I might move there. Um, right, all right. Exactly. What, yeah. uh, what do we got? Uh, so we've got a Volkswagen GTI, JP. This all is, right. uh, what is this, a Mark 5, Mark 6, Mark 7? Mm, you get into the newer ones and I start to get confused. I think this is, a, what year is this thing? 16. Yeah, I don't know. Probably a six or seven. I think it's, it's probably the same a seven. As, same as it's the same as the professors. What's a professor's car? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a seven. Yeah, I, 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 I love anyway. after you know Mark fives. I just kind of lose it because Volkswagen. Who cares? But um, it's yeah. just a more like, expensive Audi. It's like it's like was it was he did he die in Rocky Seven or Rocky Eight? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, yeah, they anyway, jumped the shark a long time ago yeah, uh, with Volkswagen. This, all right, let's talk about this car. This is a nice car. This, though. this is a cool car though. Uh, I love the Tornado Red. Um, I had an Audi Four Thousand uh, that was also painted Tornado Red. I love that it's a manual six speed. Uh, mm-hmm. This has the two liter turbocharged inline four and it's a front wheel drive and i love the plaid seats and i think these little things i'm not looking at my photos very well but i think these things have like a golf ball st- uh shifter which is a uh, homage right to the early the first mark one's uh golf the GTIs, golf, rabbit yeah. GTIs. yeah so uh in of itself it's really cool a no-nonsense car out of florida fifty thousand miles jp um 12 bids it's sitting at 10 grand seems like a lot of car for the money um you know i think by the time the 16s roll around you had to pay th- $35,000 to get a GTI. So uh, by all accounts, this should be a screaming deal by the time it closes auction, if it meets its reserve. Um, not not modified except, JP, can you explain to me and our audience, what is a clutch delay valve delete? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, a that's, clutch that's delay a mod. valve yeah. delete. Yeah, this guy tinted the windows and he put a basically a full exhaust on the thing and then put that valve delete. I'm not sure what that does. So I... I I'm, anyway, there you go. That's yeah. that's it. That's someone's, that's what makes the car someone's go. Someone's gonna have to. Uh, someone's gonna have to fill us in on that one. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, GTIs are just spectacular, fantastic, wonderful driving cars. I mean, it's from Florida, so I think uh, you should peel at least ten percent off of the whatever this thing should go for at CarMax or something. Uh, yeah. You know, this is not a difficult car to find. You can find this car anywhere in the country at any time. Uh, so buying one on an auction site is a little a national, weird. Yeah. yeah. National auction site. Cause now you're going to have to, I mean, if you're on the other side of the country, you're going to have to pay a couple of grand to ship it. Uh, that just doesn't, I, I don't see how that pencils out on a car that's worth maybe 15 grand. Um, right. but you know, I mean, you know, cause I mean, just Florida just destroys cars with the heat and the humidity yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but this one by all accounts seems to be a very nice car. And I mean, yeah. you know, the four door thing, um, I can't, but in 2016, I think they were still making two doors. So I would definitely prefer a two door. Uh, but you know, the four door, uh, affords you a lot more utility. You can stuff a bunch of big dudes in there. Um, yeah. ask us cause we know driving around and, uh, <laughs> riding around in the professor's car, a bunch of dudes. Uh, meat, yeah. M- meat wagon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can get a better all around car for 15 oh, grand, right? I mean, yeah. maybe not this one specifically, but that's how much these are worth, give or take a few grand. How many miles does this I, one have on it? 50,000. Yeah, so that's good miles. I mean, it's you know, it's going to be a good car. The, the, it is a Vagcom car. You know, it's going to have little electronic gizmos start to fail and stuff like that soon. Um, you know, everyone I, that has one of these, when the warranty goes out, it's like w- anyone that has one of these and they're taking it into the dealership to get their work done, the, the back of the house, the warranty guys will say, when you're like 5,000 or, or 500 miles before the warranty ends, bring it in. We're going to do yeah. like all everything. the stuff, everything. everything. Cause you yeah. want us to pay for it instead of uh, you later. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah. I, you know. I agree with you, JP, though. When you talk about this as like the, just the GTIs, it's yeah. entire existence. Yeah. If you had to have one car, I mean, man, you could do a lot worse than a, yeah. than a GTI. I, I kind of said, because I grew up in San Francisco. I know you grew up sort of outside Seattle, but you're, you're a city kid, in my mm. opinion. Um, this <laughs> is a city, a GTI is like a city SUV. You know, you've got yeah. the hatchback, you've got the practicality. This is a car you could take to the mountains in the winter because it's front wheel drive. Um, so you could go skiing in it. You could throw a surf rack and put your surfboard or your bike rack on it and go get it on the weekend. Uh, yet you can park below this car, parallel park this car in the tightest of available spaces in the blank name your city, uh, especially here in San Francisco. Uh, you know, where I live in San Francisco, right around the corner from me, there are like, uh, like four neighbors that all have GTIs. There's like four GTIs. And uh, and a Jetta all on my block, and they are the perfect city car. I mean, they yeah. really are. And yet, on a say a Breakfast Club rally, you could still go out and drive. If this was your only car, you could still go have fun doing a drive. I, I think that's a really good take because you know a lot of people are trying to get these sporty crossovers like the Macan, and I love the Macan uh, or the yeah. GLC or whatever, or any of these you know yeah. cars yeah, that are basically car. yeah. yeah all these all these crossovers that are basically GTIs that are jacked up, uh, and all they're yeah. really doing is ruining the performance. And it's like they're doing right. all the technology is there to defy uh, what the physics. what the manufacturers yeah physics have done <laughs> by making the things bigger and taller. You know when you could have just started with something like this and been done with it and prob- and just ultimately and co- and spent you know fractional money um a, right. you could get one of these with a few thousand miles on it for 20 grand <clears throat> and yeah. that is you could basically the same amount of space as what's in a Macan and you're going to have so much more fun uh, and Agreed. save twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 in your pocket. And so you could go you traveling could, for a year or something. I mean, you could good Lord. literally, you could literally afford to buy a second set of wheels mm-hmm. and put true mud and snow tires on there. And then yeah. you can go all the way to the mountains. We go to Tahoe and back or uh, what are we Mount Charleston and uh, you know, go sit up there at that lodge in the winter and have a meal and come back down the mountain safe as hell and have fun driving it. I mean, you're. Conv- I'm sitting here going, "Well, I just sold that Cayenne. Maybe I'm going to go find a GTI and just uh, has." Oh a- man, I'm telling you, I, I do need something to go haul around a bumpers and stuff like that. So I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> Tar- I- target parts. Target yeah, parts. Yeah, target parts needed. Uh, all right, I gotta go give. I gotta go give Dwayne his extra money for his uh, his uh, IROC bumper. Um, <laughs> That's so. Awesome. Okay, yeah. So all right. Where's this going to land? We're at 12 bids. We're over 10,000 bucks. Uh, you know, by all accounts, this should be a $17,000 car. Uh, the platform hurts it. The fact that you could probably buy one regionally and don't have to travel to Jacksonville, Florida to pick this one up, I think is also going to hold it back. So I'm going to say 12,000 bucks. Hmm. Yeah, boy. <laughs> uh, that makes it extra tough. I was going to say, like, I'll go 13. Maybe it finds a rally. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to go 13. I, I mean, put, it was low miles. I just, I just changed my bid again, live on air. I, yeah. I had written 14 and I took it down to 12. I love the car, but I just, why would you go all the way there to get you one? Go you on Craigslist or Craigslist. anywhere yeah. and you're going to, or auto traders, something you're going to find 20 of them like down the block. Uh, exactly. Four stores. Someone, someone just traded one of these in on a crossover. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. and so yeah. let, they ate the depression yeah. for you. Go get one. Uh, okay. Let's, yeah. uh, what do we got next? Okay, JP, let's jump over to P-Car Market because they yeah, love right. us so much. They do. They um, love us they over there. Are, they're, they're they like are all six him. people in their office like, yeah, they're talking about P-Car. <laughs> Gary, Gary and Finance, come here. They're talking about it. Yeah, JP, wouldn't it be funny if everybody in P-Car Market was just a raging alcoholic and every time <laughs> we talked about them, they all did a shot? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, man, they would have gotten much more drunk than than on this show. Uh, we do yeah. appreciate you guys at P-Car Market the, because every time you haul uh, the audience over here, we know you're doubling our audience. Only eight people watch the show, so <laughs> they, it's all good. Yeah. Even if it's you guys in the audience in your, yeah. in your office watching. Exactly, exactly. We, all right. No, listen, we love you. Okay, so Picard Mark is pimping a 2006 997 Carrera S with a manual transmission in one of what is I just Atlas Gray is growing on me. I actually really like this color. It's funny in these overcast day shot photos, the car looks like a dark, dark blue gray metallic. Mm. Um, but this color on a sunny day, JP, it looks like sort of a mysterious metallic black that I really love. So in these shots, it's not my favorite shade, my favorite shade, but 
in most days in like you know say 360 of the days in las vegas this is a hot color i really love this paint job especially popping with the red brake calipers uh jp what do they call these lobster forks lobster forks or lobster claws yes yeah the 19 inch lobster claw wheels uh which are becoming kind of iconic because they were only offered for like this one gen of car isn't that mm-hmm. correct to say yep. so so they're i they're they're uh, synonymous with 997s, and yeah. uh, I love this car. This is a cool little car. Yeah, the launch um, edition 997s a- were launched with this with this wheel, and they just right. instantly became a classic, yeah. and everybody saw them in the commercials, and I think it's one yeah. of the best-looking wheels Porsche has ever made. I, I think they are so it's perfect It's very cool. It's so distinctive. Yeah. Yeah, it, and you don't confuse it with any other wheel. Remember the other mm-hmm. day we saw 18, and I thought they were 19-inch yeah. Clara, Carrera Classics, and I was wrong. You corrected me. The, you'll never mistake this for any other wheel, and no other wheel will be mistaken for these. I mean, yeah. and I love that. Yeah. Uh, it's a, And it's a good wheel. So, uh, anyway, I just thought this car was really cool. Uh, no stories, no nonsense. They Cosmetically, this car shows uh, some of its age, 50,000 miles JP out of Cookville, Tennessee. Um, apparently, there's a little ding on the right rear quarter, which I didn't see in the photos, but they claim it's there. Uh, nothing special on this particular bid to make it a better driver. So there's no um, yeah, PASM or you know PDCC. There's no well, fancy there there anything. is there is sport suspension, but it doesn't have uh, but no sport chrono, which is surprising. That's kind of an. Where are you thing. reading sports? I'm not reading. I'm, I'm looking, looking at, at the, the. I'm looking at the bump. The uh, the picture. If you look at the uh, the dashboard down below here, I'll see if I can pull the picture up for you guys. Um, uh-huh. That is. That's that's the. Let's see here. If I can pull it up, I don't know if I can zoom in. Sorry. Come on, computer, catch up. There is a button right there. Can you guys see where okay, the cursor is so moving around? That I'm is the gonna... sports suspension button right there. Okay, so I am going to speak Porsche and say, I'm going to go out on a limb without proof, mm-hmm. that because this is an S, that standard feature, because it's not on the uh, build sheet. That's possible, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that's cool. But it's a, but JP's still right. That means this car has an upgraded suspension because it is an S, um, mm-hmm. which means you probably get firmer damping, probably a higher rate spring than the standard base Carrera. It probably mm-hmm. sits a teeny bit lower, possibly. Even if Porsche doesn't brag about it, they do things without having to market every last lateral detail to death uh yeah. we appreciate that this wasn't an expensive car back in 06 jp this was only eighty nine thousand dollars. um so you know values on these are pretty soft and and when we start to compare them as you have often done to the rising rates of 996s at what point do you jump off the rising tide of a 996 and get into uh, exactly this car that you're talking about, a manual 997S, which is still a screaming deal. So here's one for you to chew up, JP. What's wrong with this car? Nothing's wrong with this car. It's, I mean, obviously I would prefer one with a Sport Chrono, but this car is pretty much the perfect all-around Porsche. You cannot go wrong with something like this. Um, look, compared to a 996 and, you know... Being someone that actually has both, um, you know, but I have a nine, my 996, it, the 996 is the dot two is our 3.6s. The 997, uh, mine is a dot two nine nine seven, but it's a base. So it also has a 3.6. There are, they're basically the same engine, basically the same power. Um, the 996, frankly, feels a little faster. You get into a 997S oh, really? and all bets are off. A 997S yeah. with a th- the 3.8 is, you, <laughs> you can feel the difference in a big, big, big way. And it's mostly in the torque. You got to ring the neck of a 3.6. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and compared to something like an air-cooled car, it's not so much. But uh, but yeah, yeah, the 3.6 is a 300 something, you know, 320 something horsepower car. Uh, this is that 340 but with a lot more torque and you know it the second you hit the the long pedal on the right um yeah, 997s is it's, definitely the better car yeah it's actually rated at 355 horsepower and yeah. up to 295 foot pound foot of torque so yeah this this thing's got some stink and they're not heavy this is still like nope. probably a 3100 pound car yeah and 3, you're talking about maybe Absolutely. And you're talking about a two wheel drive car. I mean, you're looking at 996 C4S's going in the 50s and the high 40s when 997 S's aren't worth 40, you know, dot ones. I mean, they're all in the 30s. So it's absurd that anyone would buy a C4S 996 for more money than a 997 S um, if all other things being equal, manual and all that kind of stuff. 
And yet we see that happening all around us in yep. today's market because mm-hmm. seven S's haven't dro- jumped and yep. nine, nine sixes are basically through the roof. Like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I, so, and so I'll, and I'll, I've said it on record. I do believe I do get that the, the nine, nine, six, four S is a, is kind of a better looking car than the nine, nine, seven. I mean, a lot of people hate me for the, saying that the ass of it is. Yeah. I mean the rear end with the guilt, it's just a much more oh, dramatic car, gorgeous. especially honestly, especially the front end. Cause like the front ends of these nine, of these 997s even though it's an s there's nothing going on up here it's cool that it has the round headlights but this nose is just like snore put me to sleep the, the front of a c4s 996 has those big gaping turbo holes and the shape of the yeah. lights are not the fried eggs they're kind of that sharp it so it's just it's a very dramatic front end it looks angry and that's kind of what you want in a porsche and you know so the 997 i think that's why you know as much as people love them when they came out i think people are looking for a little bit more drama when they with their porsche but uh, bottom line is the 997 is the superior car in the S trim all the way. Uh, it's just a better car. And that's it is. someone it that really likes is. the 996s. So, um, okay. So JP, real quick question I have for you uh, is right. the 3.8 in the, this is a dot one S mm-hmm. with a 3.8. Is this also a, a candidate for a, a bearing uh, replacement bearing and bore score are issues on all m96 engines yeah. um that's just all there is to it it wasn't okay. until the dot two versions of both the 911 and the cayman boxster did they finally do away with the whole ims issue entirely okay. uh it. but uh it it would seem that bore scoring <laughs> is a bigger issue with these cars than really the ims but um you know the numbers and the issues and the and all these things it, it sucks talking about these cars because you have to have this conversation every single time uh it's not as bad as people say but it is real so there yeah. it is take it for what it is and every every expert will give you a different answer the fact is nobody knows nobody knows for sure so Drive one of these, drive it, love it, and, you know, it's still better than an Italian car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, certainly more reliable and, uh, you know, equally as fun. Um, might not be as, uh, you know, romantically thrilling, but, man, the performance. Uh, it, it's just this basic S <sighs> coupe is an incredible performing car. Amazing car. Anyone that's ever gotten behind the wheel of one of these knows how good that car is. It's just, yeah, yeah, there are better cars. You can go get a GT3, you can go get this, you can go get that. But, you know, you can hang with anyone with this car. Any any group of cars, if you're out with a bunch of supercars, if you have some skills... You're going to yeah. have just as good a time as the guy in the, in the half million dollar car. I mean, they're just fantastic. All right, JP. So right. with just, I, just about two hours to go sitting at only $30,000 on four bids. Mm. Um, I wrote $34,000 last night when I made my notes, but I am going to up my bid a grand to 35 because you and I wouldn't stop saying nice things about this car. There are some cosmetic challenges. This car's down in Tennessee, uh, but by all accounts, I, Atlas gray is not a common color. Um, and this is still an unbelievable value at, at anything under 40 grand seems like you're stealing this car. So I'm yeah. going to say 35,000. When you buy this, when you take this car home at $35,000, you'll feel like somebody wholesaled it to you. I mean, it's just yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'm these speaking cars are def- car <laughs> These cars are definitely going to come up and we saw the, uh, the base 997, I think of the same year or maybe a year older, uh, yeah. just the other day or last week or something like that on P car market, bring pretty darn good money. Um, all the money you would expect for one pretty much anywhere else. So I don't see why this one doesn't, do the same thing i'm gonna steal your bid and say 34 uh i don't think it's worth much more than that but i mean the miles are good and did they mention an ims upgrade not that i remember seeing which is kind of a bummer you would think that they would address it one way or the other like yeah you might consider there is the dual row and the and then there's the bigger one and some you gotta i don't want to get into all that stuff but still chances are it's probably gonna be fine yeah yeah All all right All right, let's go SUV shopping, JP. We got two in a row here. Let's start on bring a trailer with the car I picked, which (laughs) is this gorgeous, eye-catching, no-reserve 2002 Land Rover Range Rover 4.6 HSE Borrego Edition. JP, I I hit the Google button like four or five (laughs) times, and the best I could find out is that Borrego is the name of the yellow. I don't know what the Borrego... It's not like Borrego was an event. And it, it's been my experience, and I don't know Range Rovers very well. Justin Jurgens is eye-rolling me right now down there in Pismo Beach. Um, 
most Range Rovers are usually named after an event, and this one's named after a color. I, I don't I don't know where Borrego is. I, I, I just don't get it. But anyway, one of 100, uh, by all accounts, Borrego editions were basically fully loaded. They were all this eye-catching yellow, and I think there's some yellow stitching on the inside. Uh, but every... All the bells and whistles that were offered by Land Rover at the time are in the Borrego editions. Uh, and, and again, they only made 100 of them for that one year. This one is in Pompano Beach, Florida, with just 90,000 miles, which is actually low miles for a 19-year-old <laughs> Range Rover. Um, and they kind of hold their value pretty well, which is really weird because this car, JP, believe it or not, I hope you're sitting down. This car is sitting at $17,000 on – on listen to this, you're gonna crack up. You're gonna actually laugh and blow a snot bubble into your brand new microphone. Hmm. Twenty six bids. <laughs> wow, out of Florida, yeah. no less. Out of Florida, tell you. Yeah. Air suspension, which is destined to be problematic. Uh, it's a Range Rover. In case I didn't mention that, that also is British for problematic. Um, but man, these things are cool looking. JP, I actually want to own this car. It's so cool. I love it. What do you think, man? Am I nuts? I want to put black Dura stickers yeah. like right there behind the front wheels, like right above that blinker and just make this like the coolest car ever. Make it, you know, this Mikey, our good friend Mikey in uh, in Las Vegas has an awesome yellow 914 that's got, uh, it, you know, it, the body work is problematic. And so it's been done up with all kind with a really cool, you know, crazy big meatball, black numbers and stuff like that. It'd be hilarious oh, to man. do the same meatball treatment on this, on this and park it next to the 914. Um, uh, Mikey was, hashtags. Mikey hashtag. Let's get him on this. Look, I wouldn't oh, do that to God. Mikey. Mikey's our friend. I, I love Mikey. So it just would not be a good thing to tell him to, to get this car because he might listen no. to us and no. that would be bad advice as cool as this looks this is a lawn ornament uh oh, you know man. you if you want to get somewhere uh, i want take, one yeah make sure you got a bus pass when you leave the house because <laughs> uh, yeah. you're not getting home in this piece of garbage watch any doug demuro <laughs> video and land rover um yeah. i mean these That's, are just it's remarkable how big a piece of crap these things are i mean it it's is, just it's hard to so imagine bad. like I you can it. literally the steering wheel can disengage like just yeah. break while you're yeah. driving down the road i mean there there's all kinds of failure points on these vehicles that you wouldn't think is even oh, possible uh, yeah. and they find ways to just completely oops sorry guys i'm uh, having some technical stuff but here. jp but jp isn't it beautiful? looks great though looks great it yeah does. it really is it so really in is 97 yeah. they made a special edition called the vitesse mm. and it was also it came in vitesses i think came in two or three different colors but the vitesse that everybody will remember if you're a Range Rover person and you say oh you remember the vitesse everybody will think of this same bright yellow Vitesse uh, Range Rover. And then a few years later, clearly by, based on piggybacking the success of uh, selling those Vitesse versions, they made this Borrego edition where they pumped out 100 yellow ones in 02. And I believe, JP, that this was the last of a generation that the, the following year, the 03 Range Rover was a different platform, I think. So uh, anyway, cool car, yeah. but, but a problem. Yeah, and they didn't get any better when they switched to uh, to the other. Yeah, you can tell these are the last of the generation because those headlights. It's got that kind of like a uh, little bit more modern headlight that kind of gave you uh, a preview of what was to come on the next generation. They kind of have right, the, the yeah. different lights within a light kind of yeah. thing. Right, like the circles inside the square. Yeah, yeah. Because I had a I had a disco. Uh, I bought a brand new disco in 03, and it was you know that same kind of thing. It was on the cusp before they came out with the LR3 and uh, had a radical change to the overall design um right. you know the discos are not bad these horrible um don't get oh, one man, no, no. don't get i mean I you it. look i, I mean how it. go on craigslist you can find 50 of them with 20 inch donks uh that uh for two grand a yeah. piece and none of them That's will work right. and you can That's just right. like sit there to your heart's content the the you know i love the interiors it's so oh, man, you it's, know <laughs> rangies have that kind of that that stadium seating where you have these huge yep. windows and there's just nothing better than rolling around in a rangy when it works uh, oh until, man until they, they both both the driver and the passenger, I think, have like captain's chairs where there's armrests mm, on both sides. Yeah. And that window sill is really low. It's like down yeah. by your hip. Yeah. So it's like you're looking out over it's like sitting It's, you're it's looking down. You're not looking out. Yeah. You're looking down on all the That's lowly right. people. You, you, exactly. you, everyone else is is almost literally beneath you uh, when you drive one of these. 
uh, except your tow truck driver. He is way, yeah. way above you. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you're going to need to get to know him. All right, so what's this thing going to land at? I, 17 grand after, is just absurd after, where it's at already. That doesn't make any after, sense. We're, after we're done fawning and turning all over this car, I still think it's going to bring another four grand and it's going to sell for $21,000. Yeah, I, why not? I mean, people are, I guess, sure. What, yeah, I'll, I'll say 20. Um, the yeah. fact that someone would buy this for more than my Cayenne yesterday, you are stupid. Uh, if you're buying this instead of my Cayenne, cause yep. I, I, how many miles does this thing have on it? 90 or something? 90, 90,000, which is still <laughs> low miles for a Range Rover. It's low miles for a vehicle from that year, but it's, it's, it may as well be at 200. Cause this thing is going to break tomorrow. This thing yeah. is not going to, if I don't, where's it out of it's like Jacksonville Pomp- or something like that. Pompano beach, Florida, wherever that is. Where's the closest gas station. It probably won't even make it there. This is <laughs> garbage. See, when, when, when you talk about the cow. low miles on a, on a Range Rover from early 2000s, what you could say is think of how many mechanical failures and breakages you have in front of you. <laughs> Man, Woo. good luck to the future owner of this thing. You're gonna right. need it. All right, All right, let's get to the last car of the day. I'm over the range. J- JP, you have selected. You're taking us to Atlanta, Georgia, to look at this 2006 Atlanta. BMW X5. All this right. is a very special edition. This is the 4.8 IS, uh, and this is the early X5, if I remember. Mm-hmm. Our car has just 41,000 original miles from new. Uh, and is sitting at fifteen thousand dollars on thirty six bids. People are fawning over this car, which is crazy. Now I know that that is a great motor. That uh, that four point eight makes like three hundred fifty five horsepower and like three hundred sixty pound foot of torque. It's got like a six speed automatic, um, and these are real all wheel drive vehicles. But these things were heavy. I I was always under the impression that these vehicles, these early X fives, were problematic. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know a lot about them. Even on 36 bids, it's only at $15,000. But this is this is kind of a, a time warp car. I, I remember these, but not fondly. I never thought they were good-looking cars. Um, and the people that drove them, at least in the Bay Area, um, were mostly snobs. But anyway, whatever. What do you think? No, I mean, look, you're right that uh, the early ones were problematic. And this one, the IS versions. Yeah. were even more problematic. So they had the IS, uh, the 4.6 IS, uh, and this uh-huh. is the so this is the last year of this body style of the X5. Right. And so, and, the, and so they had the slightly bigger the 4.8 one. And I think they they kind of worked yeah. out a lot of the bugs, but these are just plagued with all kinds of electronic problems you know from from dashboard pixel is going out and and then you know servos and the transmission failing to work and problems that are like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because they're electronic problems that are affecting the mechanical portions of the vehicle uh, in an integrated way that are just like you know there's so many the the problem with bmws of this era is how many plastic gears they decided to use in so many different aspects of their vehicles everything from vanos and all that kind of stuff but when these things work well i mean this is the closest thing to a cayenne gts of the era these things were fast i mean a 4.8 version oh my gosh you step on it you're like what in that and remember this was the this was the SUV at the turn of the century right. in 2000. Right. All the other SUVs were kind of Japanese oh, the, stuff. The, this was the, the Euro the, one that was like, "Whoa, you're badass." The, the Mercedes ML was garbage. That yeah. first that first just pencil of the ML is trash. Uh, yeah. But these actually, I, I, everybody I know that owned one said that they drove beautifully. Yeah. And then Porsche and Volkswagen got together and they said, fine, all right, we'll yeah. make one and we'll show you how to do it. And of yeah. course, the Cayenne, when it came out, uh, was like completely over-engineered. Yeah. I mean, that car that car could go do the Paris Dakar rally like yeah. right off the showroom floor. And yeah. they didn't, it's like, you no, you guys, you're swinging way too hard at this. Like, yeah. it just needs to go to the mall. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. And this, <laughs> yeah, this car was, <laughs> not made to be a proper SUV. You do not, nobody off-roads one of these. No. Uh, cars and bids, when when cars and bids first came out, uh, when they launched, within the first couple of months, they had, someone had a, an older one of these. I, th- I want to say it was like an 03 or something. Uh, and it was somebody, and it was a manual. They did make manual versions of these, not the 4.8 ISs, but just the base ones. Uh, and someone did the kind of same treatment that I did to mine. Uh, yeah. You know, they put the big tires on it and it looked spectacular. And they cool. really, they yeah. really do. Is this guy speeding up the footage? I think, uh, I don't know what he's going. <laughs> you can see he's uh, stomping yeah. on it. Um, here, here's some driving video. 
video. No, I really, really, really like this car. Uh, and by the time this is, like I said already, this is the last iteration of this body style. The next year in 2007, they completely revamped it. So this is the best year if you're going to get one of these. Uh, this is the year to get. And the body trim's a little different. It's got kind of like the sportier molding. They never made it. An, they made it. They, they never made an M version of it. But this would be the no, M if they did. This is, this is because it's got the yeah. bigger motor JP. Yeah. It's got the sport. Uh, package uh, mm -hmm. and sport suspension so this actually rides lower and firmer mm -hmm. and you can see yeah. it in some of the photos this car actually sits at a really good angle those wheels look really good on the car yeah. um, i bet by all accounts this is a great driving car if as long as it doesn't give you all those niggling problems and yeah. based on the numbers it it will eventually it will. the more you yeah. drive it the more you're gonna have to deal with it yeah. uh, but panoramic roof uh you know this great suspension and the cool bodywork last uh like you said it's the last one they made and it's got the best equipment before they jump to the new platform. So yeah, yeah kind of a neat car. Uh, into the, and, and not, not a lot of miles, right? How many miles did you say it had it? 50 or something? 40, 41,000. Yeah, all new. right. You got like uh, 30, 40,000 miles of driving before it completely uh, causes you all kinds of hell. Uh, but still up. not as bad as that Range Rover we talked about. Um, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If the engine blows on this, there are plenty of other engines that you could swap into this bad boy and have all kinds of fun too. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are into doing that on these. I mean, Boy, put a put a put a V10 from a from a six series M or something like that. Oh, that'd ask. be Why not? sick. Uh, we know some guys up in the Northwest that have done stuff like that. That are just great. Imagine one of these driving by uh, or coming into cars and coffee mm -hmm. at like eight thousand RPM in an X5. That'd <laughs> yeah, be right. Hilarious. I, I will tell you though, even this one, the way it is, when you hear them, you're like, whoa, what's going on there? The the yeah. IS version of the X5 yeah. has always had a really cool grumble and makes you go. I thought that was just next five, and you, you you kind of focus your eyes and realize, oh, that no, that's something something pretty different. So yeah. love it, uh, but I don't know if it's really going to bring a whole heck of a lot of money. Where do you think it's going to land? Well, so JP, last night it was at fifteen thousand on thirty six bids. It's it's been moving while we're talking about it. Uh, yeah. Clearly, the bid nerd the, the bid nerd light has been shined on this car. So we're up to sixteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars on thirty nine bids with still three hours to go. So while I put eighteen thousand five hundred, I actually think I actually think this thing is going to bring more money than our Range Rover and more money than your car. Better. I'm I'm going to change <laughs> my bid. And maybe say that I was wrong yesterday on your car, but I'm right today at twenty four thousand bucks. I'm gonna go. Mm. I think this car is gonna have a, a flurry finish because some people uh, make irrational decisions because they overvalue their cars, and I think that's gonna happen here today, just based on the, the water. There's thirty six bids on this thing, JP. People fighting over it. Twenty four thousand dollars, and it sells. And it wouldn't be surprised if it goes crazier than that. Yeah, look at that lower valance on the back. I love that. Oh, I love that color That's like match. the tacos. Yeah. That's like yeah. the tacos. Yeah. The only thing, you know, I think some of them had like the, the on the rocker panel, they had like little perforated kind of floorboards on them. They did on the yeah. newer ones. I thought the right. ISs had those too. But anyway, you look at it, this is just a gorgeous looking uh, maybe, SUV maybe for not a lot somebody, of money. Maybe somebody like you and I smartly took them off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, well, no, they look great. They, they look cool. Those little, the perforated things on the side, they look yeah. really cool. Um, okay. But I don't know. Whatever. I, I'm going to say 20. Uh, same as my Cayenne. Uh, this is, yeah, I mean, my Cayenne's gonna. My Cayenne will be on the road uh, for m far more Long miles than this one. Even though mine has yeah. like a lot more miles already, this car is gonna cause someone problems as soon as you hit like eighty or ninety thousand miles. Maybe sooner because a lot of that stuff is age related and stuff. But look, um, fifty thousand miles yeah. is three years of driving. Somebody can enjoy this for two or three years and probably get most of the money out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, you could buy this and that GTI uh, for less money than a new Macan and have a much cooler garage. Um, right. and, and honest and get more life out of them because you're not going to put as many miles on the X five, uh, as you put right. all the miles on the GTI and drive the X five every now and then. And, uh, all yeah, the weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah. And just look, look baller when you do it. Um, all right. So there it is. We've given our bids. Did we give our bids? We did. Yeah. yeah. We're, done. Right. We're done. There it's it is. Show. We are done. Good. That is a show. Thanks for joining us on a, don't ask me what day it is. I think it's Wednesday or something. Uh, edition <laughs> of the bid nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer and other auction sites for, car enthusiast and nerds like us make sure you hit the subscribe button like and share this yeah. video with your friends let everybody let all the other nerds in your life know that yeah. uh, that you found it's, your people 
it's it's time you can start asking your friends if they've been watching binders because they have and they've just been too ashamed to admit it it's yeah, time we, you come you, you nerds need to come out of the closet and start yeah. admitting to one another how many of you are watching our show and looking at the reruns it's it's okay now it's okay you can go outside you can and, cut and, you can come out of the trunk now yeah, come out of the trunk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, we nice. got, uh, I guess we've got two more shows to go this week. Uh, join us tomorrow when Bradley Brownell from Radwood, the, one of the original yeah, founders of Radwood, so will be rad, our third dude. nerd tomorrow. Uh, he's going to talk about Rad for Sale, so we're really stoked about that. Uh, thanks again for hanging out today. We will see you guys tomorrow in the 9 o'clock hour. Bid nerds.